जय सत गुरुदेव a warm welcome to all present here in the zoom and all those who are watching on the facebook live my name is shrinivas patnaik and i will be your host for this session of swarved satsang in english a series of sessions in which esteemed members of the bhangam yoga singapore and worldwide are invited to speak and give us a visual of where they what they experience or have experienced and share the knowledge of swarved with all of us so swarved is a vast book what we call as the constitution of spirituality which i'll tell more about as we go down in the session today's agenda today's agenda will be basically we will begin with the uh, a session with is it swagat gaan and mangal gaan followed by a presentation of the day which is titled as bondage to liberation the six progressive states of soul a topic once again which is very vast and i'm sure the speaker of today will have a great difficulty in putting all in 40 minutes time permitting we shall have a q and a session at the end of the talk please do place your questions in the chat so that they can be addressed collectively or you may even unmute yourself during the q and a session and ask with a word of thanks and then the conclusion of the session will be with shanti part we expect the satsang to close at around 12 pm a quick appraisal for those who are not aware of vihangam yoga or even those who are already are aware let me refresh a little bit and introduce vihangam yoga singapore is an organization is an ngo a pioneer in yoga and advanced meditation training uplifting the human as life in all aspects the organization was established in the year 1924 by his holiness sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj he discovered this wonderful meditation technique after 17 years of strenuous meditation practice today under the guidance of the present sadguru his holiness shri swatantra dev ji maharaj vihangam yoga has reached more than more than 45 countries and has transformed lives of more than 5 million disciples worldwide our operational headquarter is situated on the bank of holy river ganga in prayagraj in india several initiatives were taken during the global pandemic by vihangam yoga singapore which include daily online sessions of breathing vihangam yoga meditation and now even post pandemic we have added more inclusive sessions including the one this one which is held every sunday to know of the many more events that are happening i would invite you to visit the website vihangamsg.com the uh, the events page has got all the events listed and get associated for your own benefit and self development the introduction without telling you about the swarved mahamandir will be incomplete which is located in varanasi india and can house 20000 practitioners at any given time this was inaugurated by a honorable prime minister in 2021 visiting the swarved mahamandir should definitely be on the bucket list of everyone listening to this satsang I had the opportunity to visit the Mahamandir in 2019 January when the construction was still on, and also had the divine intervention of having to get initiated to this meditation inside the Mahamandir Quadrangle. Now let's start the session. First, we are going to offer the welcome song, a small prayer for world peace and prosperity in the holy feet of the Master, and get blessings for this session. The prayer will be displayed. 
on the screen in English and Hindi. Uh, a quick meaning of this song and the Mangal Gan in English for those. This song has been composed by Sri Sadhguru Sadafal Devji Maharaj to welcome the eternal Sadhguru entity. And in this welcome song, a prayer has been made to the eternal Sadhguru entity to bless us so that its spiritual message can be disseminated throughout the world. It has also been prayed to bestow the praying devotees with special energy and to protect and preserve the mantle of Sadhguru in the world, which has been bestowed by the eternal Sadhguru entity itself. The Mangal Gan or the Song of Peace and Prosperity. This prayer for world peace and prosperity has been composed once again by World Guru Sri Swamiji while in the highest state of yogic meditation. Meditation practitioners are instructed to make this prayer a regular basis from their platform of meditation for the sustenance of world peace and prosperity in all nations of the world. Now I would like to invite Chandanji to chant the Swagat Gan and Mangal Gan. Jai Sadhguru Dev, Swagat Gan. Aaj Swagat Nitya Guru Var Sant Subhagam Aaye अध्यात्म विद्या दीप ज्योति सोम रस बरसाई दोष दूर गुण दूर करी के सुध हंस बनाई भेद गम गति ज्ञान घर जन शक्ति द्वार हटाई कुले द्वारा शब्द सागर भक्त जन अनवाई जन सदा फल विश्व शिक्षक शान आन बचाई आज स्वागत नित्य गुरुवर संत सुभागम आइए मंगल गान विश्व शांति नाम मंगल परम गुरु को ध्याए वर्ग द्वंद शांति दूर कर भाव भेद मिटाए सार्वभौम समष्टि सता ध्यात्म राज बनाए भेष भाषा भाव जग में ज्ञान पर दर्शाए समृद्धि सुख शांति धरातल स्वर्ग भूमि बनाए विश्व शिक्षक जन सदा फल नीति स्वर अपनाए विश्व शांति नाम मंगल परम गुरु को ध्याए थैंक यू Thank you, Shandanji, for the wonderful rendition of Swagat Gan and Mangalwan, Mangal Gan. Now, for the much awaited talk of the day, from bondage to liberation, the six progressive states of the soul. Speaker for the day would be Sauravji. For those who have already heard Sauravji in the past, Three sessions. Sadly, I missed the last one, but I will definitely catch up because 
Saroji is such an eloquent speaker and has such an immense grasp of the subjects or the topics on which he speaks. Subhashji has, uh, Saurabhji has been associated with Vihangam Yoga for probably more than a three decades or so, right from his childhood. And has been through successful careers in Singapore, heading various organizations, and has also spoken at various, you must have seen him speak at various other international forums. Now I request Saurabhji to please enlighten us with today's topic. Welcome Saurabhji. Oh, Jay Sadhguru Dev, everyone. Thank you, Srinivas Ji. Am I audible? Yes, you're loud and clear. Thank you. So, friends, today we will discuss uh, the journey of the soul from a bondage to liberation. Recall that in the first episode, we had introduced the soul as one of the six eternal entities. So, souls are conscious, subtle entities which have a limited existence. And by virtue of their limited existence, they are also a bit ignorant. So, you can say that their limited existence is also a partial contributor to their ignorance. In the second episode, we had said that from Vidya, is the knowledge of all eternal entities, including the soul itself. We also said that Brahmavidya is required for liberation. And we had also said that the complete knowledge of Brahmavidya descends only in a deserving and eligible soul. And we had also said that pure souls rapidly advance in meditation to reach their destination. In the third episode, we had said that all yoga forms have originated from Brahmavidya. And we had also said that all yoga forms are based within the domain of Prakriti. We had also said that the virtuous path to eligibility is in the 4S framework of Vihangam Yoga, which is the sadhana the Swadhyay, the Satsang, and the Seva. In the fourth episode, we had established a relation between a controlled mind and an eligible soul. And we had broached the top topic of taming of the mind and purification of the mind in the first three stages of Vihangam Yoga. In the fifth episode, last week, we discussed in detail the four internal organs of the soul through which it functions in prakriti or in illusory nature or in the mortal world. So during this presentation, we will use these three terms interchangeably. That is, the prakriti is the same as the mortal world is the same as illusory nature. So today, we will discuss the six progressive states of the soul as it journeys from bondage to, to salvation or liberation. So the journey of the soul from bondage to salvation begins with the gross mortal body that you see at the bottom of this uh, cakes, which are laid on top of each other. It begins with the gross mortal body, which is the sthul sharir, which all of us are, which is the visible forms of our body. From there, it progresses towards the sukshma sharir, which is the subtle part of our bodies, which we don't see, but which, are, which is a very much a part of our bodies. From there on, the soul transitions to the causal body, which is the karan sharir, 
they are on to mega causal which is the mahakaran sharir from there on it goes to the kavalya sharir which is the detached body form of the soul and finally the soul reaches its ultimate destination which is the swan or the hans state now having no awareness of the gross body which we all are during yoga meditation this itself <coughs> sorry results in renunciation of our gross body so when the soul further delinks itself from the vital life forces which are the pranas it delinks itself from the mind which is the man and it delinks itself from the intellect which is the buddhi then the subtle body or the sukshma sharir is also discarded now all acts of prakriti or illusory nature are conducted through these vital life forces or pranas the mind and the intellect so when the consciousness of the soul transcends them in yoga meditation and stabilizes in the subtle zone further ahead then what happens the subtle body also gets discarded the subtle body is made up of 19 entities the 10 sense organs organs of deed the five vital life forces which is which are the five pranas the mind the intellect the chit and the ahankar as we saw in the last episode in our discussion of the internal organs of the soul so what we need to understand here is that when the consciousness of the soul dissociates from these entities then the subtle body also gets discarded now this process of delinking continues after the soul has delinked from the gross body then from the subtle body the next stage is when the soul delinks with the three attributes of prakriti or illusory nature or the mortal world the sat raj and the tam gun when the three attributes are also done away with then we say that the soul has transcended or it has shed the causal body the inspiration for the outward flow of energy of the soul arises due to its interaction with these three attributes the conflicts of these three attributes which is called the trighat of the trigun it results in life beginning to flow into prakriti or into the current of illusory nature or into this mortal world so when the yogi detaches from these three attributes then he renounces the causal body and what happens as a result the outward flow of the energy of the soul stops and the soul attains its conscious or chetan form which is different from the form it had in the domain of prakriti so the association of the soul with illusory nature or with prakriti is actually the causal body form of the soul and therefore when the three attributes of the mortal world or prakriti are disassociated from the soul due to intense efforts of yoga meditation the soul comes into its pure form and it becomes brilliant and powerful and due to this influence of the new found status of the soul the flow of prakriti or the flow of the soul's energy into the mortal world stops and this pure soul now progresses in conscious devotion to attain the pure bliss of the lord so upon the dissociation of inert prakriti from the soul what do we witness there is complete absence of lethargy sleep absolutely there is no need for such a yogi to sleep 
and still remains healthy. The soul here is in its native form or in its conscious form. And this is the symptom of renunciation of the causal body. Then we move to the next state after the soul has moved out of the causal body further ahead. And here we deal with memories. Now, actual peace and happiness, which the soul is looking for, it cannot be obtained until the memories of past sensory gratification and desire for more sensory gratification of Prakriti or the mortal world remain associated with the soul. So in the special upper levels of yoga meditation, all ignorance, memories, and desires completely disappear. Why? Because they are destroyed from their root cause. This is the state of renunciation of the mega causal state. So when all these desires and ignorance memories, they have disappeared, then we say that the mega causal state or the Mahakaran Sharir has also been transcended. Now this mega causal state uh, sharir or the, the, the Mahakaran Sharir is also the state of the soul which had been acquired by it when it was coming down from the state of salvation. Remember when we were discussing the soul in previous episodes, we said that the soul was initially in a state of salvation, but because of ignorance and because of ego developing into it, it had embarked on a downward journey due to its own will. And this happened because the soul developed a strong desire to perform deeds and bear their consequences in the mortal world of Prakriti. So when the yogi gets seated on higher levels of yoga meditation, after renouncing his gross body, subtle body, and causal body, the memories of sensory gratification of the past, which we called sanskar in our previous episode, and which is stored in the chit, one of the internal organs of the soul, along with their desires associated with them, are also destroyed. And this is when we say that the Mahakaran Sharir or the mega causal body has also been transcended or renounced. By this yogi. So the thing to understand here is that the desire for sensory gratification is the root cause of association of the soul with Prakriti or with the mortal world. Therefore, the destruction of these past memories of sensory gratification, which are at the root cause of the mortal world and their associated desires also, this, this becomes essential for the soul to make its upward journey into the conscious world. The flow of Prakriti does not stop with just making theoretical speeches like the one we are making today or through outer renunciations. We go and we make uh, a sankalp or we, we make resolves that we are going to renounce this, we are going to renounce that. That does not result in a permanent flow of Prakriti. The permanent flow of Prakriti only stops after the destruction of memories and desires of sensory gratification in the chitta through the practice of yoga meditation, after which the yogi gets elevated to the highest levels of spiritual progress. And the yoga meditation pathway of Vihangam Yoga clears this bondage of memories and desires of sensory gratification, that is the sanskars from the soul, resulting in liberation from the bondage of Prakriti. Now, when the soul begins to believe due to ignorance that it itself is the Lord, then it begins to forget its true form and it comes down into the flow of Prakriti. So the egoistic nature of the soul is called the detached state. 
because on the journey back into self realization the soul is getting completely detached from the illusory nature or from the prakriti so this is the detachment so this in hindi this form is called the kavalya sharir and what is the cause of the kavalya sharir it is the egoistic thought of ignorance or due to ignorance that comes into the soul of aham brahmasmi i am the lord now for the servant to believe that he is the master and that everything else is no different from him is a thought that can arise only due to ignorance and this is the root cause of downfall of the soul in reality the soul can never become the supreme being because recall our first episode where we said that there are six eternal entities the supreme being or the lord is one of them and the soul is another one of them the six eternal entities always exist as separate entities they do not merge into each other one does not become the other so what is the samadhi state then in the samadhi state of in the samadhi state of yoga meditation the soul acquires the form and properties of the lord like an iron rod immersed in fire acquires the form and properties of fire but the iron rod does not become fire when taken out of the fire it comes back into the form of the iron and so does the soul after coming out of the state of samadhi so in the state of samadhi or in salvation the soul is consuming the bliss of the supreme being and acquires his form and properties but it does not merge into the supreme being like two inert objects merging into each other with the derived object merging into the cause of origin the soul is not derived from any entity it is an eternal entity when the state of ignorance of the soul is lifted the soul gets freed from the bondage of prakriti and then it consumes the pure bliss of the lord when the egoistic state of aham brahmasmi or i am the lord is discarded then this detached body form or the kavalya sharir of the soul becomes also discarded and then this soul begins to flow in the current of love prem pravah for the lord and the master servant relationship is rekindled the soul in this state comes into its pure form and in the absence of any prakriti its consciousness is pulled up towards the supreme being the egoistic state of aham brahmasmi is the one that results in the downward flow of the soul into prakriti or inert nature or illusory nature and the destruction therefore of this ignorance results in the upward flow of consciousness of the soul upon which the detached body so uh, state of the soul vanishes now after this master servant relationship is restored then the supreme being is attained through pure devotion and this results in salvation the yogi neutralizes the the doubtful ignorant detached state of kavalya through his yogic meditation practice of the highest level and then he becomes successful and grateful upon achieving the state of salvation and the lord so in summary the detached body form is the one that brings the soul into downfall and is also the one which completely detaches the soul from prakriti on its way up towards the state of complete knowledge finally the swan state now through the practice of yoga meditation the detached form of the soul which is the kavalya sharir is renounced and when this is renounced the soul gets free of the state of ignorance or agyan in which it was forced 
due to its association with illusory nature or prakriti. In this pure conscious state, the soul now enters into the ocean of the experiential world, that is the Lord. The soul gets completely immersed in this ocean like a fish in water and it becomes blissful in the acquisition of the form and properties of the Lord. This is the swan state of the soul. It is like that of a fish in water, in a fish swimming in water to reach the ocean and once it reaches the ocean, it happily immerses into it. In the same way, the pure soul becomes successful and grateful after achieving the bliss of the Lord. And this is the highest state of explicit experience that can be had by the purest state of the soul. So in the Samadhi state of Vihangam Yoga meditation, where there is a complete absence of the three attributes of nature or of Prakriti, only then the yogi achieves stability in his unbroken samadhi state for a very long period of time and remains, in, remains immersed in the bliss of the Lord. The samadhi state of yoga meditation is attained only upon dissociation with prakriti. So therefore, the samadhi that you hear from other yoga meditation methodologies it is obtained within the domain of prakriti, that is inert samadhi. We have discussed this in our previous episodes where we differentiated between jad samadhi and chetan samadhi. A jad samadhi can be obtained by you at any time when you are completely immersed in an object, where your mind and intellect are completely immersed in the uh, manan and vivechan or in the rumination of, an, of any object or even in thoughts of the past, there is a chintan going on in the chit along with the mind, you could be in a state of samadhi because at that time, the world doesn't exist for you. You are completely immersed, but that is a jad samadhi. That is an inert samadhi. That is a state of samadhi within the realm of prakriti. Vihangam yogis achieve a state of conscious samadhi in which there is no prakriti. The soul acquires its pure form, devoid of prakriti, and then enjoys the bliss of the Lord in a state of complete knowledge where all ignorance is gone. Because recall, when there is ignorance, the swan state changes into the cavalier state. So, in a state of complete knowledge, in the conscious realm, the soul attains the Lord. And after the knowledge of the Vihangam Yogi stabilizes, it keeps on getting brighter with each passing day. And the Yogi stays in bliss. Hatha Yogis operate in the domain of the mortal world, as we said. Their inert samadhi state lasts only till they are able to stabilize the mind and the pranas or the vital life forces through breath exercises. After that, the flow of their consciousness into the outer world resumes and everything gets back to normal. However, Vihangam yogis, once they attain the Lord, they always stay immersed in that constant conscious flow of nectarous bliss at the abode of the Lord. The Vihangam Yogi sleeps on the bed of the Sushmana channel. We'll discuss this in some other episode. And his inner conscious flow is always on. Therefore, Vihangam Yoga is a Vedic experiential pathway in which the soul breaks away from the base of Prakriti. And only after this breakaway is the Samadhi state or the state of devotion obtained in its entirety. In this state, as we said earlier, there is complete lack of lethargy and sleep. Even when a yogi is not in a state of samadhi, he completes his sleep in a few hours. Thereafter, he resumes his inner immersion of devotion into the Lord. The flow of consciousness of this yogi 
to prakriti or in the outer domain through the sense organs and organs of deed completely stops during the samadhi state and the pure relationship of the soul with the supreme being stably emerges the yogis can maintain their samadhi state of vihangam yoga meditation for very long periods of time maybe for 6 months at a stretch during which they are able to maintain this unbroken state through a stable body posture these are the symptoms of detachment of the soul from the causal and mega causal body and upon renunciation of this of this state the soul leaves prakriti and comes into its conscious forms so to conclude the mind and our senses they work only after associating with the energy of the soul the yoga meditation practitioner does not have awareness of the mortal body upon the inward turn of energy of his soul hence there is no action related to the outward association of his mortal body so in other words his soul transcends the outer world then the consciousness of his soul gets connected within into his subtle body since the gross and mortal body is not conscious it is discarded during yoga meditation the attainment of the lord and liberation happen through this very mortal body and human life through the science of yoga meditation the soul progressively detaches from its association with prakriti it comes to its pure form it offers devotion to the supreme lord from its conscious form and it attains the blissful form of the lord prakriti gets progressively discarded as the energy of the soul progressively increases and ultimate happiness or bliss of the lord is obtained through yoga meditation so with this i would uh, like to end my presentation for today i thank you all for your patient listening and would be happy to take uh, questions if there are any wonderful session thank you saurabh ji very enlightening again thank you srinivas ji and what the topic was an amazing one bondage to liberation wow the moment i heard the topic i was like enticed by the whole session and probably even a skeptic will skeptic will get enticed by to believe the way you speak saurav ji and explain with ownership a strong belief and confidence in manage from all your presentations today's today's session was another gem wow the moment of with the various bodies and the various states very clearly explain i'm sure there are more details and you would love to speak in more detail as you go forward in the next sessions i would like to invite any questions to saurav ji either you all you can post it in the chat or can unmute yourself and ask a question while we are waiting for the uh, questions from the audience uh, saurav ji just the query that comes to my mind maybe you would like to address this as we go through the states you had mentioned that the there is no there is completely lack complete lack of lethargy and there is a complete state of mind where the body uh, and the soul are detached now so far as we as mortals our education is concerned our knowledge is concerned we are supposed to take care of your, our body we are supposed to eat properly do exercise breathe what happens to that body in that state is it neglected is it decaying what is happening to the body can you throw some light on that yeah thanks rivasi so i mean nothing is happening to the body the body functions as usual so for example when we are asleep our body continues to function as usual so to say that to uh, keep the body in a state of good health and good functioning 
we need to always stay away is not factual. So just like that, when we are in, an, in that state, which is in the conscious domain, the sense, the soul gets detached from the sense organs and organs of deed admitted. But what happens, how we have to understand from the previous uh, episodes discussion on the internal organs uh, of the soul, earlier, <clears throat> sorry, earlier, the mind was acting as an intermediary between the soul, which is a conscious entity at one end, and the inert organs of, of deeds as well as the sense organs. And this was the connection through the mind. Now, in higher stages of uh, yoga meditation, especially the conscious stages, the mind is made to dissolve at its cause or root center of origin. So when there is no mind, the connection between the soul and the sense organs is broken, apparently is broken. But another connection takes over, that is the soul itself. In the conscious, when the soul is completely awakened or it is uh, enlightened, the soul takes over the functioning of the body. And uh, I mean, the, the body gets taken care of by the soul. And what, what better way to take care of the body than to uh, give it to its own master rather than an intermediary, which is playing around with the body in a way. So the body is maintained. It's just that the focus or the concentration of that evolved yogi is on the absolute truth. He is not focused on, or he is not consciously focused on doing things for his body in the realm of the mortal world. It gets taken care of as it gets taken care of while we are in a state of sleep. Hope this answers. Thank you so much. And I'm sure uh, all listening here would also have had that question on their mind. Any other questions? For Saurabhji. Okay, let's let's move on to the uh, next session. Or Subhashji, are you there? Would you like to add something to this topic from your side? We always like to lead here. We are all used to listening to a few words from Subhashji always. Uh, uh, nothing much. I think uh, Saraji has explained everything to all of us about the sixth state of the soul. I think the most important thing for all of us is first to understand the reality behind this because listening is one thing, but imbibing it and uh, applying it to our life is another important thing. One of the most important aspects behind all these satsangs which we have been organizing rigorously every month, every week, without any stop. The main objective behind this is for all of us to realize the ultimate reality about ourselves, who we are, and of course, First, we have to understand this theoretically, practical thing as well as experiencing it at a higher level will definitely come once the blessings of the Sadhguru will touch upon to us or once we continue our regular meditation to connect ourselves with the Sadhguru itself, then only those things will happen. But unless and until we know theoretically what is the truth, what is the ultimate thing for which we do exist, we will not progress the way we have to. That's why in these six states of the soul, we have to understand and realize where we stand and from where to where we have to go. Do we really want to go or not? Listening a story is one thing and applying that story in our day-to-day -day life is another thing. So, I always request everyone, every single person around me, including myself, to give some effort and give some time to at least realize about our own life 
about our own existence, what we are, why do we exist? We know that all, everyone, every single person is involved and engrossed in our day-to-day -day life activities, different kind of pains, sufferings we have, stress is there, time is not there, absolutely okay. And this is true for everyone. But do we really want this only from our life? Or there is something beyond this, which we need to realize and understand. And ultimately the question comes, why do we exist? So once we are able to understand that, once we are able to realize that part, that aspect of our life, I think half of our journey will be completed automatically. So all of our efforts, which Saurabhji has been putting since last few weeks, making us understand ultimately what we are on a theoretical basis, on the basis of what Swarved says, would be successful. I would consider if even a single person among one of us will be able to really realize even partially what is being said here. So please, introspect yourself, give some time to yourself, the suffering, the pain, the, all the worldly activities which are going around us will never stop. If we think that everything will be settled down and then I will do all these kind of things, believe me, it will never happen. Never means never happen. It will never happen. It has never happened with anyone and it will never happen with anyone. Because all of us who are here are because of our own karmas, our own prarabdha and all other things. And we are continuing doing that karma. It will never stop. Among all these things itself, we have to find our own time. Not at the time when we are helpless. Not at the time when we are not, when we don't have any strength in our physics or we don't have any strength to perform anything. This is the right time where we have strength, our body is functioning. We are strong, but ultimately this strongness and this effort has to be made, even though partially towards the right thing to know our own existence. And that is the most important thing. We could very easily understood theoretically though, what Saurabhji mentioned that these six states of soul, where we exist right now, where we are, what about the other parts? It is our, our reality as well. Have you ever tried to understand what are those things from our own life perspective? Or these are just to hear and just to give a simple mental analysis for one or two hours and that's it? Probably we need to do more. Probably we need to put our effort a little bit more to realize ourselves our own existence, our own conscious nature, which exists in its own form. It's just that we need to realize it in the right form. So thank you very much, Srinivasji and uh, Saurabhji for today's session. I think every one of us, all 14, 15 people we have connected today, definitely have got something new as well as something to think about own our own life because that is the one of the most important objective for all such satsangs which we are conducting. Thank you very much, Saurabhji, for your wonderful efforts. Thank you. Back to you, Srinivasji. Thank you, Subhajji, <clears throat> for throwing light on the action part, which I completely agree with. And uh, I always, since I've heard Saurabhji say this in the first uh, presentation, these four words keep ringing in my ears all the time. Seva, Satsang, Swadhyay, and Sadhana. What I realize is that these four things to do cost us nothing. And when, as, as, as Subhajji also always mentions, and we all discuss, when it's free, we think we don't pay importance to it. But then someone said in the corporate world, free is expensive. Please look at it with the other part, uh, with, with, the, with a different perspective. It's very invaluable. Seva, satsang, swadhyay, and sadhana are simple terms, but they mean a lot. They are for us. 
I encourage everyone to read Swarvel on a regular basis. The vote of thanks will be for everyone. Vote of thanks goes to all out there who are here on the Zoom. Thank you to all those who are listening on the Facebook live. All those who are going to listen to this on the Facebook in the next the following days. Thanks to all those office bearers today who took the roles, various roles, Chandanji, for singing the Swagat Gan, Mangal Gan, and doing the slideshows. But that doesn't stop me from extending thanks to everybody who is present in the core group, working in the back end. We would like to see more involvement. Just do it as Seva. And that's where it all begins.